somewhere over the rainbow. Welcome. Must be Tuesday morning at 11. Welcome to the Just Jan Show of the RHG Network and Voice America. A place where real women can and men can talk about the needed new vibration of the femininity coming in. That's why we use the kitchen table. It is that softness, nurturing, cooperative, collaborative nature that is so innate to the feminine essence that we spend this time doing this show so we can bring masters in who can help us unlock some of those stuck areas in ourselves. Now, speaking of stuck, and speaking of ouchy, I have a little ouchy myself, it's a good prop, but the way that we have treated Mother Earth, we have taken her to a brittle, contracted, almost exhausted, asphyxiated state, and now with the awakening, emerging voice of the Divine Feminine, we are bringing a new respect, care, and enlivening of the layers of our Mother Earth, and I credit our guest today with being one of the spearheads, outspoken vocal person from her soft, beautiful, feminine nature. Her name is Linda Delaire. I welcome Linda Delaire, an advocate, and a, just a very beautiful being to our show today. Linda! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Looking great in your shirts and your jeans. and She almost looks just so... Gracious. Yeah, just lovely and feminine. And yet all these years, every time I see you, I see you at Bioneers, I see you on Facebook, and you are speaking the truth for Mother Earth. And so as we were preparing for this show, you just had so many wonderful things to say. It starts with the farmer, and the worms are important, but let me just start here with the professional little background. For 15 years, Linda, a green building consultant, has worked in the green building industry, lecturing and advocating for regenerative living solutions through energy saving tactics and reducing waste. I love it, I love all these words. Each one has an action principle behind it. She is the California Outreach Coordinator for Hempstead Project, HEART. Hemp Energetics Alternative Resource Technologies, a 501c3 project of Earth Island Institute. The heart's mission is to build green economics in every tribal nation in the U.S. using industrial hemp as a tool. And I know hemp has so many lives and so many ways of serving us. I can't wait to hand it over to you. She's a board member of the U.S. Green Building Council Redwood Empire Chapter. She served as Vice President of the Board of Ambassadors of Hope and Opportunity, working with homeless youth ages 18 to 25. She went to uh, Community College of Rhode Island. Oh, so you're an East Coasterner. Oh, welcome. Glad you're over here. You know, Rudolf Steiner said, that it would be the people living in the Western Americas in the years of the 2000s that would finally set the spark to ease the technology and bring the world back to its natural state in human back to the senses. So that's why we all had to come here. Um, there's a, your Feng Shui, accredited professional through U.S. Green Building Council, certified green building professional. You are well credential in this work and you are a spokesperson in a pretty much masculine dominated field. So tell me what brought you to this work? Uh, being human and recognizing that illness and uh, and breaking down of communication was happening so rapid, so rampant, that I, I realized that I was a global citizen, mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't, I wasn't bounded by any borders at all. 
And mm. so I decided to, to look into that and to, in myself and see what was in me that could be represented in terms of who I am in this body. And I went to the rainforest and I, um, I was in ceremony with the shaman there and I, uh, the trees hired me. They woke, up, they woke me up and the they looked at me your boss. and said, you know, we're really happy you're here. I was surprised. And nine months later, I went back to the rainforest to another section in the rainforest. And again, a whole bunch of different trees said, we're really happy you're here. You're back. You're back. You're back. And I thought, what am I hearing? You know, is this me or is this in my head or what am I hearing? And I'd look around and the trees, the branches would be blowing in the wind and the rain and they were saying, you're here, you're back. And I felt so alive and so present and trees are being so damaged, our environment, ripping them out, using them for toilet paper and paper towels and disposables and just filling our landfills with trash come from nature itself, from the trees that hold the soil and bring in the weather. And I, I woke up to all of this there. And uh, there's no cell phones, there's no distractions, there's just you know, people who've lived there for thousands of years in a way that honors Earth. And they're seeing that the monkeys are disappearing, and they're seeing that the rivers are not producing as much fish. And I'm way deep in Ecuador, near, near Peru. And, uh, and I, I woke up to you know, who that within me, but I didn't know what that would look like. And uh, a few months later, I got a job working for a lumber company. I never had thought of me working for a lumber company, but here I was being a salesman for, for uh, wood that came from forests that were sustainably managed. Mm -hmm. You know, like Forest mm -hmm. Stewardship Council. If any contractors are out there, look for your lumber with an FSC certification. It means Forest Stewardship Council because they're, the people who work within the communities are not turned into slaves like they are with mining and other institutions upon which we de depend, but they're destroying the earth and they're destroying the cultures of communities. And so when I looked at the trees, and it's like, okay, how can I be of service in life? And I guess my channel is through trees. This only happened like eight, ten years ago. That you fully emerged. I'm hearing you speak, and I'm, I see you emerging, uh, emerging with the micro, but looking at the. It, you started with the word communication, the broken communication system of the soil to the people to the food chain. Everything is broken by mankind's greed and confusion and ignorance, and you are bringing the vibration, you are healing the plant human communication and you are speaking for them. Heal us. Teach the humans how to live with us and to teach us and live and we will serve and respect. Yeah. That's a pretty important role. I know trees speak because our dear friend in common, Bruce Heschel, I went to France with him and he went on to demon her and they taught him how to hook up electrodes and I got to sing. The plants sing. I would sing la 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 la, and they would go ba 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 ba. When plant, he showed us how when a tree in his backyard, if a cat would eat a bird, they would go oh oh. So you are connected to their angst, and you can tell humans what they need. And I know you're doing it with building sustainable. And I loved how you said, it's not just for Americans, it's for all of us, homes. What type of homes do you see humans would be ideal for living sustainably and ecologically in the future? What is your dream? Like those little igloo types and communities? No, I, I think that uh, homes can be built in whatever shape that you like, depending upon the uh, uh, your location, your geographic location. However, uh, you can grow your own home by growing hemp, industrial hemp. Oh, what do you mean grow your own home? Be because uh, you can have acreage of 
plants, of hemp plants that can be turned into green building materials. And I happen to have some with Whoa. me right now. This here is called a hemp crete. And this is a hemp and water and hydraulic lime. And it's mixed together. And you have a framed house. And you can, have your, you can frame your house with bamboo or steel, or you can have sustainably harvested logs or, and, uh, to hold up your wall. So it's stick framing. And then you put this, you mix this like in a cement mixer. However, it doesn't have the toxins that concrete does. There are no volatile organic okay. compounds, and you don't need to mine. You know, you've got this and you've got this hemp plant that comes from the fiber of the hemp plant itself from the stalk. And so uh, that's ground up and it's turned into, uh, excuse me, the, this is not the fiber, the fiber is used for clothing. This comes from the interior of the stalk and that is uh, what you take, you grind it into half inch pieces and then you put it into a um, cement mixer or some such thing and then you mix it with lime. That is a mined product. Um, fortunately, we're getting away from mining. This technique has been used for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, hemp was used in the pyramids. So you've got a, a history with this product. And, and then you've got a lime coat on it. So this could be anything on the outside of your house. But you keep, this has an insulating property where it will keep your house cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It, is, uh, it takes toxins out of the air. It takes carbon out of the air, the plant itself, and it puts it into the soil through its roots. So uh, there's so much more to say about this. Oh, that's just phenomenal. Let me feel it. It's very lightweight as well. Oh, it's well. light, but I can see the insulation. Yeah. And, and there's the waterproof. Yes, absolutely. It's all completely natural. And yes. you can almost pick up your house and put it on a flatbed truck and move. Well, um, like any <laughs> other house, you'd have to be very Tiny careful <laughs> with that. Uh, the thing with this, with this this material is it is very, very lightweight and when the United States starts allowing hemp to be grown in it again in the quantity that we need to grow it, uh, then we will be able to grow our own houses. What's the limitation part on that? Is it's there a competition with lumber? Or? No, it's a competition with, uh, with cannabis. This is the cannabis plant. Okay. This is cannabis sativa. And this is the same cannabis that the marijuana is cultivated from. So marijuana, marijuana is a made-up name. It's can, they're both cannabis sativa, except that cannabis here, the to smoke it or the get high stuff, more or less, that has a THC in it. This has a very low amount of THC. If it's any higher than 0.3% THC, it's considered to be cannabis or marijuana. And then mm -hmm. you have a whole different regulation with it. The United States was, uh, we grew hemp here. The uh, first American flag was woven out of hemp, Betsy Ross's flag. And we were a hemp growing country. And it wasn't until about 1930s or so when, uh, when lumber, uh, William Randolph Hearst owned the forests and he uh, thought that uh, they should be used for paper rather than hemp because hemp is distributed wealth. It's grown by the farmers, and um, mm -hmm. you know, so only so many people can own an oil company mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a rail, railroad or something like that. So it was political and greedy, oh, totally motivated. motivated. But couldn't indeed. this be grown industrially, where if our government wants to protect us uh, from cannabis and smoking, couldn't it be industrial crops, or is that still in place? That blockage. Is there government looking for more? Um, well, solutions, <laughs> alternative solutions, with your help and your presence and bringing it forward. A lot of states are bringing in industrial hemp. Uh, Kentucky, Rand, Good. Rand uh, Paul and Mitch McConnell have brought it into the state of Kentucky. Kentucky used to be the, uh, the, the big hub of uh, hemp distribution mm -hmm. back in the day. George Washington grew it and Andrew yeah, Jackson tobacco, grew it. Tobacco, it, make, it makes sense. Yeah, well the Kentuckians lost uh, tobacco and they needed to grow a crop again and they mm -hmm. went back to him. So Well, it's so um, they're profitable so because every part of it is usable. 
Yes, every part of it, like this is the woody core, and mm -hmm. the outside is, uh, is, is for fabric, for fibers, for clothing. Mm -hmm. And also, it's used for, um, it's also going, look, it's, excuse me, it's going to be used for batteries as oh well, and solar panels and superconductors, because the fibers are very, very thin, they're hollow. Whoa. And uh, they're going to be replaced. Well, you're scratching. certainly listening to the trees when you're doing this work. We're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back with Linda DeLaire, Sustainable Building Materials. And, and it sounds like this is a, a pretty neat solution. We'll be right back. the messages of Mother Earth through the trees in helping us bring more sustainable ecological ways of living. And she's quite the spokesperson. I've known you for many years, and I remember you worked at Lydia's, you were facilitating a anywhere where there's something bright, forward-moving, on the edge, you're always there. Have you noticed that? No, Pretty I, much. I have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> A anywhere where there's something bright, forward-moving, on the edge, you're always there. Have you noticed that? No, Pretty I, much. I have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> she's very soft-spoken, but her name is always there, and she's not a, it's not about her. It's not about you. In fact, I said, when we come back from the break, okay, we talk about the products, you are a spokesperson. You mm -hmm. are listening and responding to that feminine intuition message to say, protect the world, heal, heal the world, so people can live together mm -hmm. sustainably. Mm -hmm. See how soft mm -hmm. she is? Just, yes, that's my job, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. So you have some events coming up. Yeah, I have three events coming up. Um, the first one will be at the Exploratorium Museum in San Francisco. And uh, we were invited, my, the group that I'm the coordinator of, um, California, outreach coordinator uh, is for uh, the the Oakland Museum recommended us to participate in a cannabis exhibit at the Exploratorium and the reason that the Oakland Museum recommended us is because our little group had a table at a cannabis exhibit that the Exploratorium had and it was called uh, California the an altered state <laughs> <laughs> Such a great title. That's so great. An yeah. altered state. Thank goodness we're altered, yeah. And we Towards have, the light. It, yeah, it was, it's California is such an interesting mixed bag mm -hmm. of things. And uh, just like our weather this winter, you know, either drowning us or drying us out in drought. You know, we're needing to find some balance here in how we uh, live within the state, within yes. the shortcomings of the state. When it's drought, you don't have as, use as much water. It's, it's just so, it's just common sense how to live on Earth. So Oakland Museum recommended us to the Exploratorium that we, we could do a table there at okay. their event on cannabis. And so we have a hemp snowboard, we have a hemp briefcase, we have uh, lots of materials cool. that we show. Then we're going to, I am a moderator on a panel for the New Living Expo. And that's going to be at the last weekend in April in San Mateo. And I will be uh, moderating a panel on Prop 64, which is very controversial. The Proposition mm -hmm. 64, it's the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. Mm -hmm. And so I have panelists there from an attorney to a grower to a dispensary owner to a TV star who are all, they all have their story on, on cannabis. and and what it means for Californians. And Calif what happens in California is usually pretty much a leader for the rest of the country. We're a bellwether, aren't we? Is that the yeah. right word yeah, for that? That weather, weather right. being sort yeah. of thing? Yeah. And as you were saying, uh, drought, water, we are teaching people how to deal with nature yeah. and how to conserve and how to be thoughtful. I want to congratulate you. The fact that they chose you to be the... Um, 
what was the word? You're the moderator for mm -hmm. that panel. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a trusted position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, means like that it. you hold the information and the mastery yeah. and the grace. That's yeah. it. That's better than being one of the specialists, I think. Well, I, because they all trust and like you. And I'm going to learn a lot. Yes. I'm going to learn a lot because I asked them what. And just as you asked us, what would you like to talk about? So then I can zero in and do some research on that. And, mm -hmm. and they're all so, so diverse. That would be an interesting group. And then the last thing I'm doing is going to be at the How Weird Street Fair in San Francisco. <laughs> and there's going to be a, a hemp pan a cannabis panel. And I'm on the panel mm -hmm. uh, with everybody. I'm not moderating it this time. And so hemp and, and, and cannabis, and I don't like calling it marijuana. I just, it's just it's one little part, part of it. Just, it's cannabis. It's, a, it's yes. an herb. It's mm -hmm. an herb. Mm -hmm. And that if you let it grow in a certain way, you're going to get this from it. And if we do it that way, what's the reason? You know, why are you wanting to grow it at all? It's Did you participate in the Deep Green Festivals mm -hmm. out of the uh, Point Richmond? Oh, so yes. fun. Oh, wasn't that fun? You mean the soil, not oil? No, it, it was called Deep Green, and it was just everything about the vaporizers and putting it in food oh, and everything mm. but perfume. I mean, it was quite amazing. Yeah, I've done the Emerald yeah. Cup, but I didn't do Deep Green. And usually, when we go into the cannabis uh, events, you know, we are cannabis, but we are hemp. And hemp and mm -hmm. cannabis cannot grow, be grown next to each other because the, the cannabis is all female and the hemp plant is male and female and you can cross-pollinate and then you Listen lose your crop. To this. So, this is new information to me. Yeah. Do you give workshops on these? Mm, well, I, part I participate in events that mm -hmm. there, there are other people mm -hmm. speaking as well. And also we have a 10 by 10 booth uh, that we have. We do mm -hmm. a lot of... Talks and so you're somewhat of us, all of these uh, people who do research and different things, you facilitate and bring everybody to the table so all the information is shared. That's very feminine too. Yeah, I Come sit at my yeah. table. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's what and you're doing. Outside of my work as a, uh, what I do for, with Hempstead Project Heart, mm -hmm. the heart standing for hemp energies, alternative resource technologies, the uh, other thing I do is I am a project manager and I work as a green building consultant and I'm working on a project now where we are taking a 2,800 square foot house and we're remodeling it. Mm -hmm. And the first thing the owner said, he, he, he wanted to put solar panels. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you can't put a lid on a sieve. You know, you can't put high heat if you're going to, it's going to leak, you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, I didn't know that you did this kind of work. And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'd like to hire you. This was over a lunch. He didn't Excellent. know this part of my life. He knew you're I was a hemp person and all of that. So I'm, I'm being the homeowner's rep for him too, which I love, because then I can speak for him, because I know what he means, but he doesn't have the language. He doesn't know. That's what we call alignment. Yeah. Follow your bliss, get hired. Yeah. People always say, but if I do what I really want, well, you're a living example. Yeah, it's, it's just that he, he doesn't have, he doesn't know what to ask. And if he doesn't know what or how, he may get many different mm -hmm. answers. So, you know, New field, all those answers. Yeah. I have a question for you. Here we have, uh, what is we'll your, see. if you had a magic wand, what, what would you love to do? What would you create for yourself? What would be your highest, best idea of service? I kind of think you're already doing it, but... I pretty much am, and I, I like the idea of an agency to have different people uh, listed on my website, you know, so I'm... Research. I'm, I've got these people that I know can do the job, and then I, I get a cut from whatever work they get. That's, that's perfect. Or, what do they call that? Joint ventures? And that's the, the way of sharing, profit sharing. Yeah. Right, yeah, of referrals sharing. and teamwork. such, too. We're teamwork. Yes, we have that here, here, right here in Nevada City. We have our Nevada City. And it's right next to them. And it, it, it is like a trade barter sort of thing. I'm yeah. going to get my zipper fixed because I can't remember how to fix zippers anymore. Yeah. But all of these things are happening in California. And I know you've been in Sonoma. Sonoma, are you still in Sonoma County? No, Marin. Marin. Oh, you're Marin. Oh, yeah. yes, there. And also here in Nevada County. And I've said very often that the psychic, intuitive Edgar Casey said, 
the first city of light, the coherent, full-blown change in consciousness for humans is going to occur where? Nevada City. That's it! Nevada City! Yeah, that's that's why we're doing this show right here, right here at the Buddha Gallery. Yeah. We're anchoring in the light. A yeah. lot of amazing things happening in a lot of places, mm -hmm. but Northern California, and it's because people are not playing the game traditionally. What if you had a regular job? You couldn't have heard the trees sing. So I thank you for all the viewers. I thank you for Mother Earth. I thank you for the Creator. Blessings to you. Mm -hmm. How can people find you? How can they give you what you need? Support. AdlindaDelair.com. It's my website that's being remodeled as we speak, pretty much. And uh, anyone interested in hemp, go to VoteHemp.com. You can find out a lot there. And in terms of cannabis, you can look up Oaksterdam University. They're located in Oakland. And okay. uh, Prop 64, any of you the cannabis people, cannabis loving or fearing people and hating it or it's here and it's not going away. All right, one more question. What if someone was watching this and said, I want to give that woman some money? What would you do with that money? Uh, I'd invest in um, a bigger website and, and, uh, and, and a plane ticket more to, tra to travel and, and go where I would like to be because I can see that I'm pulled towards that place and there'd be something Absolutely, you are proving my theory right here. You are holding your node. This is the SOAR initiative, the women's organization I work with. You are sounding your authentic resonance. Then you go visit other places mm -hmm. and inoculate, mm -hmm. laid in, in, in spread and harmonize with your message. We are finished. We could talk all day. Yes. Linda, thank you for coming on the show today. You're so uh, pleased. Uh, I said pleased. Blessed and pleased to have Linda to learn her with us today. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. This programming is for you, for you to grow and be inspired. And before we say goodbye today, I'd like to tell you who is joining us next week.